Effects of the weekend shenanigans from J.R. Smith and Ash and Winger continue to ripple out, plus yet another new all-star full-timer. We've got more weekend cancellations and a track that has had enough with posting videos. Let's go. It's Wednesday, March 15th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. There was more fallout yesterday from the weekend insanity that was GR Smith versus Ashton Winger at Southern Raceway. If you somehow live under a rock, last Saturday night, Smith decided to use his car as a weapon under caution to get payback on Winger for a situation he himself kicked off with first corner contact. Winger then threw a short slider, which led to more contact from Smith, and then it was on from there. After several unhinged moves from Smith under that caution to spin Winger out, both Ashen and his dad, Gary, made attempts to go after GR in the pit area. Supposedly, Gary had a hammer. Uh, both of them ended up arrested along with GR's merch guy. I don't know the details here, but it sure felt like there was some past history between these two, which is pretty wild since they were just paired together a season ago as driver and car owner. And the mug shots that have been circulating from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Department of the three have really added a nice little something extra to this absolute clown show. As I said back on Monday, maybe these guys need to find something else to do on their weekends that doesn't involve race cars. Clearly, we cannot handle the responsibility. In the days since, though, people have been bailing off the GR Smith ship. Word of Outlaws Rookie of the Year contender Peyton Freeman announced yesterday he was departing the Team 22 machine owned by Smith. A reason was not given in the announcement, but I think it's pretty obvious what the deal is here. Freeman will return to his family-owned F1 ride that he had run before partnering with Team 22 for this season. It is not clear at this moment how this will affect Freeman's schedule, if he's going to remain an outlaw full-timer. We'll kind of just have to wait and see there. And I haven't seen this confirmed anywhere, but there are also rumors that Austin Kirkpatrick has fled Team 22 as well. Kirkpatrick was going to run a partial schedule in the other GR Smith owned car and then continue development of his AK chassis. No penalties or suspensions have been announced from the series following the weekend. This was a Southern all star show. But if I'm in charge of one of these dirt late model tours right now, whether that be the national tours, or regional tours, I think I'm going to make it clear behind the scenes that these guys maybe need to just sit out for a while and let things cool off a little bit. Uh, speaking of dirt lane model tours, both the Outlaws and Lucas have sacked their weekend races coming up because of bad weather. The Outlaws had stops at Boyd Speedway and Smoky Mountain Speedway on top, but both shows have been canceled for the weekend. We'll see the Outlaws again in a few weeks at Farmer City for the Illini 100. And Lucas was headed to Indiana and Ohio this weekend, but they announced yesterday their weekend is off as well. The race at Brownstown has been canceled outright. Uh, no suitable makeup date is available there. The Buckeye Spring 50 at Atomic is being pushed back to May 4th. And that will end up being, I think, a pretty kick-ass night of racing. Lucas is going to be joined at Atomic by the All-Star Circuit of Champions for what they are going to call the Night the Stars Came Out. This is a little bit of a throwback to Atomic's days as KC Raceway hosting the All-Stars and the Stars Late Model Series. Uh, we won't see the Lucas Late Models now until April 21st at Tri-City and April 22nd at Macon. Uh, yesterday on the show, we talked about Connor Morell announcing his plans to go full-time with the All-Stars in 2023, and the field has grown yet again. We already knew that J.J. Hickel was joining Andy Potter with the Ceiling Motorsports team for this season. They had initially announced a schedule which would center on Ohio, you know, Ohio Weekly, uh, plus a trip to Knoxville for the Nationals. But now they've decided to step up to full-time All-Star competition. We've seen that yellow ceiling sprint car a bunch with the All-Stars recently uh, that had Greg Wilson behind the wheel. Wilson has now returned to his own car, and obviously uh, ceiling has hired J.J. Hickel. J.J. spent last season with Brandon Eikenberry in the Midwest in that Deuce uh, 5 motorsports car. The pairing actually made the feature at the Knoxville Nationals. That was kind of the highlight of their season. Hickel is a driver from Washington. He racked up a bunch of ASCS victories a few years ago, and I think he's kind of a sneaky guy around the country to pay attention to. The addition of Hickel brings the all-star field now to eight, joining Morell, Tyler Courtney, Chris Windham, Parker Price Miller, Scotty Thiel, Zeb Wise, and Hunter Schoenberg. We've still got that asterisk next to Justin Peck as well. Uh, last night at Millbridge Speedway here near Charlotte, the next generation of the Larson family found a victory lane for the first time. Kyle's son, Owen, who races in the beginner box stock class of Outlaw Carts, picked up his first ever win during Millbridge's opening night. 
I'm a little disappointed that he didn't bring dad up on the wing like dad does for him, but oh well. Uh, it looks like the future of the Larson legacy is in good hands right now. Finally today, I had a few people message me this graphic that was posted yesterday by Winchester Speedway in Virginia. Not the Winchester Speedway, that's the paved track, but the Winchester Speedway, that's a dirt track. I always love going to find these, especially on Facebook, uh, because I'm always curious about how terrible the comment section on posts like these look. And in this instance, the track folks knew they were going to catch hell, so they just went ahead and closed the comments completely. That's my favorite. Uh, in this graphic, though, Winchester is basically saying that nobody is allowed to post any video from the racetrack on race days. That includes both live streams and any recorded videos. They even go on to say that uh, the race day means the entire day of the event, the morning, the day, and the night. Uh, anyone caught posting will be asked to leave the facility. They go on to say that live videos harm the Speedway's existence and tickets, weekly expenses, snowballing. You get the idea. Uh, I'm glad that there are certain tracks out there who are short-sighted enough uh, to enact policies like this. Because in the aftermath, when this doesn't fix their problems, maybe, just maybe, they'll be forced to actually start dealing with the issues that are really keeping people away. And what's interesting about Winchester 2 in this announcement is this place very much feels like a backgate racetrack. They've got just three shows all season that feature any sort of super late models. And they've got two nights of USAC East Coast Sprint cars. There are no other big series that come through for the entire year. The rest of the season is limited late models and SCDRA, hobby stocks, and modifieds. This is one of hundreds of tracks around the country that exists specifically for hobby racers. And they know it, which is why a grandstand ticket is 15 bucks, but a pit pass is 30. They're going to sell way more pit passes every week than they will GA tickets. And for comparison, you can buy a $30 pit pass at several shows at Eldora and Knoxville weekly. So I'm not sure who they're worried about with this policy, but hey, I hope it works out for them. Uh, if you want to get into, uh, into some other dirt racing content this week, Wing Nation has Liam Tensa and Joey Saldana. Passing Points has Brady Bacon and Chase Randall. A Ford Bite has Adam Stricker. All Gas No Breaks has several new interviews, including ones with Kendall Tucker and Ashton Winger. Uh, this Winger interview was from before the issues with G.R. Smith. Uh, Doing Witch on Dirt has Jack Kofer, and there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, Suave Talk, The Dirt Nerds, and A Dirt Track Confessions. To see all these shows, all these new episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcast. We've got the same streaming schedule today that we had yesterday, racing from Millbridge on Dirt Vision, plus Dirt Vision Now and Flow Racing 24-7. The only difference is yesterday was Outlaw Carts at Millbridge, today is Micros. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good Wednesday out there. We'll be right back here tomorrow.